Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So 2024 is around the corner and I'm sure a lot of us are starting to think about, you know, goals that we want to achieve, things that we want to improve, things that we want to stop doing and let go of as we move into the new year, as we move into a fresh start. But every single year I like to sit down and sort of review how things went in 2023 to see where I want to take them in 2024. So in today's video, I wanna go over with you my 10 style intentions for 2024. I like to do these every single year so that I have kind of a direction, even like a North Star to guide me in my shopping behavior, in how I'm treating in my current wardrobe, if I'm using it enough, and to just hone in on things like my personal style and getting to know myself a little better. So let's get into it. For those of you who don't know me, welcome. My name's Christina. I talk all about intentional living, intentional spending, and how to get the most out of what you've already got. If any of that sounds interesting to you, then please give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm gods. It really helps me out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, join us. We're pretty cool here. And since we're on the topic of setting goals and intentions and new habits for the new year, I wanna take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So if you haven't heard of Aura before, they're essentially an all-in-one app. It's got pretty much everything you need for your wellness and sleep, like meditation, sleep stories, even cognitive behavioral therapy and life coaching. Aura's content is created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists around the world, and you can really curate down and personalize what you want from the app. I've been using Aura for years, and I really like that you can customize how long you want your session to be. So for me, I really enjoy little snippets of on-the-go moments of mindfulness. They're like two to three minutes long and it always just really teaches me to think differently about things and address my core and limiting beliefs. Something else I really want to take into 2024 for me this year is to journal a lot more and to meditate. So I'm definitely going to be using Aura as my prompt and my guide to get into that habit. And what I really love about Aura is that the coaches and therapists, storytellers on the app are all experts in their field. They are actually certified. Now it's not even just an audio app you can sign up for live sessions, live coaching, and even celebrity masterclasses where you can hear stories and learn the life lessons of Olympic athletes and even actors. So it's just a really cool comprehensive app that's really customizable and helpful for whatever you need, for how long you wanna spend on the app. And I think it's just a great tool to help you get started with any of those habits for 2024. So if you're interested in giving Aura a try, they've offered the first 500 people who click the link in the description below a free seven day trial plus 25% off your Aura subscription. So thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring today's video and let's get into my style intentions for 2024. My first intention is probably going to be my greatest one and it's going to sort of be my mantra or motto for the entire year and that is styling over shopping. My friend Alison Bornstein I think said it best and it's that we don't need more clothes, we need more ideas and I absolutely love that concept. I wanted to really lean into this and make it my mantra because because I feel like I am just kind of tired of always wanting new stuff all the time. I feel like ever since I did declutter 60% of my closet and sort of found my way to a more balanced version of minimalism that I like to call minimalist-ish living, I've been able to sort of rebuild my closet. I found ways to shop a little bit more freely, allow myself to bring things in while still sticking to my budget and my values in terms of not having too much clutter, not feeling overwhelmed, and not going broke for things. But I've noticed lately that I still feel really kind of overstimulated a lot of the time with like the social media content that I watch with things like TikTok, Instagram. Why don't you let me fix you some of this new Mococo drink? All natural cocoa beans from the upper slopes of Mount Nicaragua, no artificial sweeteners. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? So even though I feel like I have come to a much healthier place when it comes to my relationship with shopping and stuff, it's still something that I have to actively manage every single day. I really think it's so important to spend time with what you have so that you can learn what you like, what feels good, how to manipulate and be creative with the clothes once they're on your body, compared to trying to solve the problem of, I have a closet full of clothes, don't know what to wear, I'm so bored with all my stuff, and buying new things. I find too, when we bring in new stuff, even though we think it's gonna be amazing, sometimes it can just add more confusion into the mix. As much as shopping is a habit and maybe a bad habit for a lot of us, learning how to style your clothes is a muscle and a habit. And I think it's one that we would all benefit from implementing. Number two is to shop in person 
first. I've noticed that I'm primarily an online shopper. I've just noticed that when I shop in person, I find it so much easier to walk away from an item because there's just elements to shopping in person that can't be achieved online. Even with the best description, the best photos of the product, video. And that is a simple fact that until the garment shows up in the mail, you can't try it on, you can't see what it feels like, and you can't inspect the quality in detail. And the thing about online shopping too is that it uses up a lot of resources like shipping, handling, having to return the product, having to pick it up, having to drop it off again. And I've noticed honestly, it's pretty mindless. I tend to shop online when I feel like I want some downtime or I just want to relax because my life is pretty busy working as a pharmacist and managing my YouTube channel, my business. So I feel like having the rule of shopping in person first, not only is it a great filter for me to decide if I truly want to buy something or not, but I have to make time to go and do it. Because I think shopping, if you have a good relationship with it, it can be a fun and leisurely activity, especially if you like make a day out of it and go with your friends it becomes a lot more of a fun experience and I think it's a way to sort of integrate back into your community like I really want to go and check out more boutiques in Toronto more vintage shops around here things like that and just like explore the city that I live in a little bit more but with this intention I think it really is about knowing yourself so if you find that it's a lot easier for you to walk away from your online shopping cart and you just like get that satisfaction by adding things to cart and closing the tab and walking away then maybe shopping in person isn't really a solution for you so I think it's really about knowing yourself and knowing what works for you coupling with number two I am also aiming to shop secondhand first more. Even though I really enjoy going thrifting and I am shopping secondhand and vintage a lot more now, especially a lot more than I used to, I still think that my default setting is to shop new first. That's still just my tendency. So not only do I want to shop in person a lot more, but I want to explore thrift shops and vintage shops and charity shops a lot more just to develop that skill of thrifting really great one-of-a-kind pieces. And if there is something newer or current that I'm looking for, then I will still you know check out websites like Poshmark, Vestiaire, The Real Real, but I really want to teach myself to default to thinking can I find that second hand, can I find a thrifted dupe of this first rather than just going straight to the new thing. Number four is a tried and true one if you've been following my channel for a while then I think you already know it's going to be coming but that is to continue to implement a wish list. This is something that I've talked about for years but it's really all about creating some separation from that initial wanting of an item to the actual buying of it. It. Because as someone with a pretty sus level of impulse control, this is something that has helped me tremendously to just let myself calm down. <laughs> for a second. It's so easy to see something and just be like, I want it and I want it now. And then by the time you click order and it arrives at your door, you forgot that you even ordered it in the first place. You're like, what did I get? What's coming? What? I don't know. So whatever works for you, I think it's a great policy. Some people wait 24 hours, some 72 hours, some people wait even a week or a month. But for me, I find my sweet spot is to wait at least a month before buying something. This I found in my experience is just enough time to create some separation from that want and the buying to allow myself to forget about the item but it also gives me time to make my plan and now coupled along with looking for the item secondhand going to my local stores and boutiques to see if they have it there in person rather than buying it online it all just gives me more time to create a plan around acquiring the item and I find if I'm still thinking about something a month later then chances are I really do want it and it's something that aligns with my wardrobe my style and my taste fantasy self items must become reality self items. I've talked a lot about shopping for your fantasy self, essentially shopping for things and items that really live up to a version of you that you want to be or that you want others to perceive you as being, but those items never really tend to actually get used in your real life. I found in the past a lot of my shopping was really geared towards shopping for a fantasy self, but those pieces usually ended up turning into clutter for me and ended up being decluttered because they were just things that never actually aligned with my real life and they never ended up getting used. For example, I had a closet full of towering high heels 
and back in the day wedges that I never really wore because I walked everywhere or I did a lot of standing at work. I don't think the fantasy self is necessarily all a bad thing. If your version of your fantasy self is a person you actually want to become, it's somebody that you want to manifest, maybe they live out habits and routines that you want to adopt and they're sort of your avatar for that better version of you that you want to become, then I think that's when the fantasy self becomes something that's a bit more motivational and something that you can aspire to in a healthy way. And I like to sort of frame the fantasy self in that version as like kind of like the glow up version of yourself. It's where you start with that identity and then work backwards from there to become that person. That's for example how I developed my gym routine. And even looking back, that's how I got out of debt. I thought to myself, what does a financially responsible person do? Well, they probably budget, they probably check their bank account regularly, they probably don't impulse buy and rather they think about their purchases before they buy them. So when it comes to personal style, I think shopping for your fantasy self can be helpful if you want to push your style a little bit more, allow it to evolve, but those pieces cannot end up being the pieces with the tag still on in the back of your closet. So it's kind of or get off the pot type of situation. If you buy something that feels like an item for your fantasy self, you still have to integrate it into your wardrobe, still focus on that styling aspect and really lean into that first mantra, which is styling over shopping. Number six is to implement regular dopamine detox months. Essentially doing no buy months every so often. I think I'm going to do them every other month starting in January actually. So if you want to join me, make sure you follow along. I'll be taking you through it. But I like to frame my no buy or no spend months as essentially dopamine detoxes now. And I've learned this from reading the book Dopamine Nation by Dr. Ann Lemke. I will have a whole video sort of breaking down the nuggets that I took away from that book because it's pretty life changing, I will say. But when you do a no spend month or take a detox from shopping, essentially what you are doing is resetting your dopamine system. You're resetting your brain to find pleasure in other things again. Because if you find yourself in this cycle of constantly shopping or always looking for new things to want, essentially what's happening is that our brains are seeking dopamine. We're constantly seeking out those rewards, which is why over time you might find yourself needing to do more shopping or to do it more often to satisfy those cravings. Dr. Lemke recommends that you do these detoxes over a period of a minimum of four weeks, where usually the first two weeks are a little bit difficult and your body almost goes into a state of withdrawal. You might find yourself really irritable, having really strong cravings. You might find yourself more anxious, cranky, things like that. And then in the next two weeks, you might notice that your body starts to calm down and you essentially stop thinking about it. That's where you might also notice that you start to find pleasure and joy and other things again. We might have thought that it was shopping that brought us a lot of joy and pleasure, so we sought out more shopping to get that joy. But now you might notice that you like shopping your closet more, or you find you really enjoy spending your time baking, or painting, or going to the gym, or watching a movie. So I find it's just a great way to sort of reset your system and just recenter yourself and find gratitude and contentment in what you already own. Now for some, I know you might think immediately that this really feels like a binge and a purge kind of cycle, because a lot of times where a lot of people sort of feel like they fail with their no buy months is that they'll do their whole no buy and then as soon as they're allowed to go shopping again you go on this crazy shopping spree. There are ways that you can sort of implement limitations and boundaries to prevent yourself from doing that. Maybe some of these other style intentions that I talked about here are great ways to practice some self binding when it comes to that but I think it's really about figuring out what works for you. So whether it be a no buy month full on dopamine detox style or doing like low spends or just having little mini challenges, even like no spend days or weeks sprinkled into your month, I think are all really great ways to just practice mindful spending and mindful consumption just a little bit more. Number seven relates to filling in any gaps that I perceive in my wardrobe. And that is essentially going low, and slow. I feel like I do this anyway, but I just notice when we fill in gaps with our wardrobe, there tends to be this sort of snowball or almost Diderot effect that happens. Tell me if you ever noticed this. For example, maybe you bought a new pair of loafers and then you say, great, I got my loafers, I identified that gap, but now I feel like all my jeans don't go with it. So I need to go get a new pair of jeans. And a lot of people are wearing these really cool colorful socks with loafers. I like that look, so now I need to get these socks. So it creates this sort of snowball 
when you start filling in gaps that I think can lead to just a lot more confusion in your wardrobe, which filling in gaps is not supposed to do. It also makes me think about sort of buying behaviors where if I am shopping online, sometimes I'm like, well, if I'm already here, maybe I'll add in another piece or two and it'll just be like a really fun little haul by the time the package comes. And I find this is also very tempting when you're going thrifting. It's really fun to get like a thrifting haul and like it's difficult to walk away with just one or two items that you set out to get when you started the shopping trip. But I find it's actually a more beneficial way to shop because you're introducing things more slowly and giving that piece time to integrate into your wardrobe. So I'm not saying don't fill in any gaps, but I think for me, it's gonna be really helpful to just integrate things one thing at a time, learn how to style it, learn how to wear it, and then if I identify a new gap in my wardrobe, sort of start that process all over again. So this is just really gonna slow down the amount of things that I'm going to allow myself to buy and bring in to my wardrobe this year. Number eight is to do a monthly 10 by 10 capsule wardrobe challenge. So this is a mini capsule wardrobe challenge created by Lee Vosberg, AKA Style B. I will leave her blog and her Instagram link down below if you want to go check it out. I've done a few 10 by 10s on my channel before, but I really think it's going to be a fun thing to integrate onto my channel monthly to create a little bit of a series for a couple of reasons. Not only is it just really fun content to make for me, but I think it's just a really great way to just challenge yourself to wear your clothes a little bit more. So maybe you practice a seasonal 30 to 40 item capsule wardrobe. Can you take a snapshot of that wardrobe and then condense it down into a 10 day, 10 item wardrobe, or in another way, are there pieces in your wardrobe that you wish you can get more wear out of, or that you've been kind of neglecting that you can sort of integrate into these little 10 by 10s to see if you even enjoy wearing it, especially if you're feeling short on ideas and just aren't really feeling that creative with your wardrobe. I think it's just a really fun exercise to practice and I am excited, looking forward to it. So make sure you're subscribed. Number nine is the hanger trick. So I'm sure by now you've all heard of the hanger trick on Pinterest. It's it's a really great visual decluttering method that really doesn't lie to you at the end of the day. So all you do is flip all your hangers backwards and at the end of a certain time period, whatever time period you wanna give yourself, anything that has not been flipped back into the correct position means you didn't wear the item. So it's something that you can consider decluttering. I do tend to practice more seasonal capsule wardrobes. So I think what I'm gonna do is at the end of every season, any hanger that is still not flipped is something that I'm either going to challenge myself to wear in the next season or perhaps in a 10 by 10 or it's something that I can evaluate on whether or not I'm ready to declutter it because I think there are certain pieces that we tend to wear more of in our wardrobes versus others and I just think it'll give a really nice visual representation and at least just help me narrow down what I am wearing versus what I'm not wearing a little bit better and finally number 10 is to create more style mood boards I think a lot of us are visual learners visual people whether you use things like Pinterest or Canva at the beginning of every season, I'm just going to create some Pinterest boards to catalog my style inspiration and just be a little bit more active in using it. So when I do open up my closet and feel like uh, I have nothing to wear or I'm a little bit bored with like my style uniform or something like that, then I can easily just go to my Pinterest, hit the season that I'm in and just be met with all of the style inspiration that I pinned at one time or another. So if you want to follow me on Pinterest to get some more inspiration, I'll leave it down below. But I just think I just want to be a bit more strategic and intentional with the way I use my inspiration because I find in the past I'll pin it to a random board on Pinterest or I'll save it on my Instagram saves or take a screenshot but it's like really all over the place so I just want to make this a little bit more curated a little bit more organized and something that works for me when I feel like I need it so those are my 10 style intentions for 2024 I am feeling really good about these I think they are a really nice mix of discipline and balance all together at the same time and ultimately, I really like how they all sort of converge back down into the ethos of styling over shopping, learning how to style your clothes, learning how to wear your clothes, and even learning how to integrate new clothes into your wardrobe is all a skill. And I think it's a skill that you learn the more you use and wear your things. It's not all about eliminating shopping altogether, but I think it's about finding ways to make it really considered and mindful and essentially finding ways to honor that 
purchase. A lot of times we say we're gonna wear things a certain way. We say we're gonna make a certain amount of outfits with this piece. And then sometimes that thing just never ends up being used in the way that we thought it would. And I think it's because, at least for me, there's been a lot more focus on what can come in new rather than what's already there. And so when that new thing comes in, it becomes a bit more difficult to integrate it in the way that we thought it could. So I think it's really all about learning to use what we have, bringing in new things mindfully and intentionally, and then learning to use those things. Because at the end of the day, doing any of those things is a skill and a habit. And having good style and finding your own personal style truly does come down to habits at the end of the day. So let me know some of your intentions for your wardrobe in 2024. Leave them in the comments down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed. See you in the next one. Bye.